welcome, welcome. This is According to Callus, and I'm your host, so things are according to me. Today is a Friday, and quite frankly, I had an entire episode planned in my head yesterday as a result of listening to a couple different other shows, and there was some overlap, and there was some grand ideas that I came up with after listening to them both, and today happened. So as a result of today, I am scrapping that. I will probably resurrect or revisit it, if you will, next week. So I'm just going to kind of examine a couple of things that I've been thinking about. Uh, and I'm going to keep it purposefully... Um, non-specific or perhaps shallow. Um, And I'm doing that for the purpose that I don't wish to indict either myself or anybody else with uh, what I have to say about the issue. Um, It's more of a, just a thought process. It's kind of a reflectionary uh, show. My wife often says to me that she thinks my show is my way of journaling or scrapbooking and <laughs> cautions me that I shouldn't be too open, particularly if at some point in the future I'd like to run for office again. But I, I don't necessarily agree and I don't necessarily see it that way because I look at this as a way to explore ideas or an opportunity to organize different thoughts on a specific topic or within certain issues and and bring them together. And the only way I can do that is to reflect on what that means to me personally, which is why it's according to Callus, and kind of drive down to an application. Is there something at play? Is there something that could be utilized in either my life or some other people's lives, is something useful. And the purpose of my show, if you will, or my podcast, if you prefer, is more of an exploration of different ideas and different thoughts and and an opportunity for you to reflect on what you think about the different ideas that I touch on or different thoughts that I throw out there. I I don't directly want anybody to just agree with myself or anybody else for that matter. The idea that, well, so-and-so thinks it, therefore they must be right and I must agree with them is just a logical fallacy that's going to lead you in all sorts of problematic things. So... Again, with the proviso that uh, I do this off the top of my head, uh, I will make mistakes, I will misspeak, and I will probably uh, bust up a word or two. Keep in mind, everything I say is based upon my opinion, based upon thoughts that are currently rattling around in my head, and while I... I'm very careful not to say anything that I don't mean or I'm not willing to defend. I'm also not necessarily indicating that it is an absolute truth. I try and source my life based upon what I believe is the absolute truth. But sometimes I misunderstand or I deviate just because I'm human and fallen. And I expect that we're all the same in this regard. So, you may choose to do with it as you see fit, but I will continue on. So, question or thought number one. What am I? I mean, there's the existential question, right? What am I? What do I matter? What am I doing? What is the purpose? Well... Again, in keeping with my intro, the idea is, what am I? And from there, we can answer some further questions. 
So depending on who you speak to, you're going to get a number of different answers. Uh, in the current uh, times, right, the, the current uh, zeitgeist of the moment, if you will, I am the embodiment of all that is evil in America today. That is, I'm a white, male, heterosexual, Christian, I'm married with children, and I actually go to church. I know, I know, it's the patriarchy writ large. But let's let's take a moment and consider that just a bit more. And if that's the case, that does put me at a disadvantage, right? So, the other thing to consider is, my generation, Gen X, we got caught in between the boomers and the millennials. The, uh, arguably the most selfish generation ever, and then the whiniest generation yet to come. And again, those are not fair because obviously everybody's different and not everybody is the same in that generation. But those are the zeitgeists, if you will, those generations. But I'm Gen X and I, we are the last of the generations that actually had adventures outside. We predate digital media and uh, quite frankly, most of us uh, had pretty exciting childhoods. We got to enjoy the benefits of the post-war boom and the mm, technological achievements of the late uh, 60s, I guess, or 70s, as we uh, were born primarily from the mid-60s going forward. And we're still alive with the digital revolution unfolding among us. And... We still vaguely remember when you had things called carburetors. So, again, you look at this and what am I? Well, I'm also a father. I have two daughters. Not a grandfather yet. Uh, I am a husband of one woman. And that's the way I like it. That's the way I plan on keeping it. I've been gainfully employed for... Well north of 30 years, probably closer to 40, but who knows, who cares? It's, you know, I'm a veteran. I'm a, uh, I'm a slew of political ideals all slammed into one individual. But one of the things that is the most challenging is I have been an ardent, ardent, ardent individualist for most of my life. Unfortunately for me, the world doesn't see people as individuals. They see them as groups of people. How can we put you together with another demographic? How can we include you in? And if that is the case, then some groups would argue that I am in the highest tier of civilization and others would say that I am all that is evil in the world. That's kind of a tough road to hoe. I mean, which is it? Well, let me tell you, I I don't subscribe to either. I don't think that either is an adequate description. I think that The definition I've given myself as far as politically goes is constitutionalist. I think there's a fairly good, broad definition. I think I would be agreeable to any number of other variations or mm, adjectives to that. But on the crux of it all, the baseline, I'm a sinner. I'm a fallen man. I'm redeemed, and I try 
to follow my Savior. And that leads to challenges all of it its own, but it is the reward that we seek. It is the reward that we don't deserve that should animate many of the things we do when we say. So, that falls directly, or let me find, that flows directly into the idea of where do I come from? Now, I am aware of the idea that some segments of our society in America were robbed of their culture. They were robbed of their family, their tribe, their location. And I am also aware that that has always gone on. It will always continue to go on. It's had different names and different applications and different abuses. But I'm fortunate in the sense that I at least have a little bit of knowledge of where I came from. Now, I don't think myself anything special or unique. I often refer to myself as a mutt. Whether it's uh, one side of my uh, parents' family where it's, you know, Scotch Irish and uh, Eastern European, or it's the other side of the family where it's French, Canadian, Irish, and German. And those are just the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there's another half dozen nationalities or overlaps that could be uh, thrown in there. And it's interesting because. There are still existing families in the United States today that reflect upon the idea that their family came over from another country and they have like this built-in longing or this mm, desire to reflect the country that their family came from and It displays itself in unique ways. So I have really no strong connection to any of those countries or any of those people groups for that matter. Uh, I just look at myself as a, a person without a people. Now I know, I know, uh, before this I had referenced the idea that as a Christian we have our own brotherhood, right? And we're all we're all brothers and sisters in the Lord. That is true. But we're looking more at the temporal level here. Where, where do you belong? I mean, if you were raised in a Polish community or even a German community, you relate to that. You, you're built into that. Certainly, if you're Irish or Italian, it's very strong there too. Or, or Latino or, or the black community, right? There's a very much built-in cohesiveness or knit community. At least there was. I mean, things are a little different now, but certainly when I was a kid, that was the case. And we're just dealing on the surface there. I mean, there are any number of different kinds of Asian cultures or African cultures or uh, South American cultures that you could perhaps throw on top of that, right? Or the, whether it's a tribal representation or strictly a ethno uh, d- distinction. It's largely irrelevant in my life because it's never been a part of it. So the question is, where do I come from? Well, as far as I can know, as far as I understand, I come from the Midwest. I come from an area just outside of Milwaukee, which is, as they say, a great place on a great lake. There's nothing unique or excellent about that per se. It's just a place. Now that place has some things that are unique about it. I mean, once upon a time, it was Briggs and Stratton. It was Harley Davidson. It was Miller Brewery. It was Pabst Brewery. It was Schlitz Brewery. All that's pretty much gone away. You strip away the blue collar, uh, motor of the country vibe you had going on there and there's a question of what's left 
So it really doesn't answer the question. And you can go further back and you can say, well, Stephen, you know, you're, you're, you're European, you know, well, yeah, who cares? I mean, if, if the majority of my family came from a distinctive national or linguistic background, that might be something, but that's neither here nor there. Indeed, there is a, um, a socialist uh, theorist that came up with the idea if that everybody just started having babies with each other, we'd all end up being more alike in a nice shade of brown. Maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong, but one of the things to remember is nations came about of their own accord. The whole idea of birds of a feather stick together, right? People tend to uh Go with people that are like them, think like them, look like them, sound like them. That is all a relevant way of looking at things. I mean, that's that's where we come from is our family. And families can be messy. I know my daughters would say the same thing. Families can be messy. But at the end of the day, blood is thicker than water. And you're always going to look out for your family. Even when sometimes you might not want to. Because family matters. So, uh, I think that we've kind of covered the idea of what am I? And where do I come from, right? These are existential thoughts, questions. So then, the next logical thing After that is, what do I want? Well, for me, I always thought I had the answer, right? And and there there are a number of them, but I want to be left alone. I want to be free. I want to enjoy life. I want to raise my family. I want to make money. I want to be able to move freely around. There's a lot of very superficial answers there. And not that there's anything wrong with them. In fact, they all go off the idea that there's a yearning to be free. There's a desire for liberty. Indeed, that's one of the things that animates me in my political endeavors is I want to protect liberty. And I've gone over this many, many times in previous shows. And I'm sure anybody that knows me or spends time around me, if they've breached this topic or this issue, they would immediately... (laughs) come to the conclusion that that's something that is important to me. The idea that I know what's best for you or I'm going to make you do what I think really never crosses my mind. Now, my daughters might say otherwise, you know, but here's the thing. Your children are your responsibility and it is your responsibility to raise them well and bring them up to be independent little humans, right? That they can become their own entities And if you've trained them well and you brought them up well and you protected them and educated them, they will be exactly what they want to be when they're ready to be it. Whether it's a borderline anarchist or a complete conformist, it is all within your desires for what you would like for your children. And then they hit that age and they make a decision Well, that's nice, Dad. Well, that's nice, Mom. But this is what I want to do. And this is what I think. And this is what I believe. And then as a parent, the challenge begins. I was successful in raising my child to become their own independent human. I just hope I did a good job. So, then the next logical progression is that is, When and if do I have grandchildren? How do I help raise my grandchildren? Well, I'm not there yet, and hopefully I'll have a good answer when that comes. I've often joked about being at the point in my life that I could basically quit working full-time and homeschool or educate my grandchildren. Now, I don't know if either one of my children are going to go along with that plan, but boy, I'd sure like to have that opportunity because, let's face it, government schools are just not where it's at. 
Okay, well, I... I guess that's the very superficial way of answering what do I want. So now comes to <laughs> the very next thing, right? It, what flows directly out of that is what does it matter? Hmm. Well, there are any number of ways that this could be answered. We could give the spiritual answer. We could give the political answer. We could give the deep answer, but we're going to purely go on the superficial here. Right. This is for you to come to your own conclusions, for you to give your thought and what it is that you're doing and doesn't matter. So I don't know any other way to look at it than was I successful in what I sought to do? Did I make a difference? Did anything I did change anything? Were my motivations right? Was the outcome justifiable? Were my actions within appropriate behavior? When people see me, what do they see? When people hear of me, what do they think? This is the questions. When you think of, well, does it matter? Those are the things that come in my mind. What comes in yours? Now, when I jump back to the format, and when I bring back the episode that I kind of dreamed up on Thursday, on Monday, I'm going to continue to tilt at windmills. I'm going to continue to push the argument. I'm going to continue to make the most of the opportunities presented to me. I am going to continue to try and make that difference. Now, whether or not I'll be entirely successful, therein lies the question. But as I've said, if not once, a hundred times by now, you lose every battle you show up to. The war is never won by the person that's not there. Sometimes just the mere action of metaphorically putting your boots on and going into battle is enough. It reminds me of a story referenced in a song, and I, I, perhaps the story is the wrong way to phrase it, but the biblical description of when the ark was used to part the Jordan. It only parted when the people that were carrying the ark stepped into the water. They had to take out that step of faith. They had to step into the Jordan River. And only then did the waters part. So you can say it's God's plan. You can say that this is within his will. But if you don't act and you don't do your part... How do you expect anything to happen? So, we continue forward. And now I'm going to tie this directly to the title that I thought of before I started. Feral Friday. Now, another podcast that I listened to, I, I got to admit the last year has been spotty, but for about six and a half, seven years, I listened pretty much every week a day and they were mostly challenging, sometimes informational or educational, but almost always challenging. And I like that. I, I want to broaden my mind, if you will. And one of the things that he does is a description of a feral pig. And I'm going to paraphrase it because 
it suits my needs to do it better. So a pig is always a pig. A pig can be put in a pen. A pig can be trained to do certain things. But a pig is still a pig. A pig is pretty smart among the farm animals. And a pig, given the opportunity, will return to absolute pigness. So you can crate. You can corral. You can basically maintain a facility for the pig to live in. But the pig is always going to keep looking to get free. The pig is always going to look for an opportunity to be himself again. The pig is going to take every chance to test every boundary to get himself or herself free again. So I look at the society we live in as nothing more than a corral, an electrified fence of what's allowable and what's acceptable and what you must do. And as a pig, I'm going to keep nosing around. I'm going to keep pressing. And sooner or later, I'm going to find that break and I'm going to get free. And in case you didn't know, once a pig is free from that corral, he becomes feral. He exhibits the wildness that is within him. Because a pig pig has never been fully domesticated. And I don't believe that a pig can ever truly be fully domesticated. And by that I mean a regular pig, not one of these little pygmy things that's helpless. But a real pig. A pig will survive. A pig is an omnivore. A pig is tough. It will fight And it will hide and it will do everything it needs to do to ensure its survival and protect its litter of children. And I want to believe that the Americans, the Texans especially, are like that. And they just haven't realized that they've been corralled just yet. They haven't seen what has occurred in the last two years. And sooner or later they're going to bump up against that fence... And they're going to get shocked. And they're going to question, how did I get here? What's going on? I didn't ask for this. How did I get here? Then they're going to say, this is not what I want. And they're going to make the difference. They're going to find that spot. They're going to get free. And they're going to return to the feral nature that they have inside them. That's my hope. That's my desire. That's what I look to do whenever I can. You know, I excel in my own mind at playing within the rules. Perhaps it's that German-ness in me, right? There's rules. Or maybe it's just because I'm my firstborn. There's rules and you play by the rules. And if you give me the rules, I'll exploit the rules to my advantage so long as I keep within the rules. The spirit of the rules. Unfortunately, those that would seek to control you, me, and everybody else, they don't believe there are rules. They have their own rules. They don't believe in such things or ideas as liberty or freedom. They have no restrictions on what they'll do to the rest of us if given the opportunity. But I'm here to tell you, once you understand and you can think through those four thoughts there, you can break free inside your head. You can visualize a place, you can visualize an ideal situation where you're not penned in. And even if that's all you have for the rest of your life. It's that one little piece of freedom, that one little piece of liberty that you can preserve in your own head. And hopefully you have the wisdom and the willpower to preach it to your posterity. We're only one generation from losing everything. I don't believe it's going to be my generation that allows it. I'm very fearful that the millennials are going to go along with it. I hope I'm wrong. I have hope that Gen Z is going to tell them the pound sand, but that still remains to be seen. But none of that's going to happen without an old fart like myself 
encouraging them and pushing them. Find the edge of the fence. Test it all the time. Find your way out. Explore your opportunities. With that, this is According to Callus. This is a Friday. And I encourage you to be just a little feral on this Friday. And I will see you on the other side.